Corey Baumeister playing Timur Erzer, taking on Aaron Bear. She's on Golgari Yagmoth. Corey's just always smiling. He's a very jovial guy. None he of that really is an act. Is. He's, he's honestly one of the most pleasant people to be around I have ever met. I know. Every time I interact with him, I'm like, this is just a happy person. Yep. What's the deal with that? I know. I don't understand it at all, but I, it's nice to see regardless. Corey going to lead on an Aether Spellbomb. I'm going to go ahead and take a read of that young wolf. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, what? A one mana one one? I'm sure that's been a common experience this weekend. There you see our friend Young Wolf. Adorable little pupper. Now why, if it dies, what's the flavor here? It's young. So it's got many days ahead of it. I don't know. I have no yeah, idea why I, this I don't know either. Back. I mean, is it like a... I feel like they should... A baby werewolf? But werewolves aren't immortal. They don't come back from the dead. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Well, I feel like it should be like a wolf zombie. Right. Right, that makes sense. Starts as a wolf, comes maybe, back as maybe a it's zombie. Just implied. It's an implied zombie. Meanwhile, over on Corey's side, played Engineer Explosives for zero, followed it up with an Emery. Get that on the battlefield. Hoping to hit a little gas in the graveyard. Don't really see anything going on there. Looks like a couple lands, Oko, and another Emery. That's just unlucky. Yeah. Not much going on for Aaron, though. Just going to sit on that young wolf. Pass the turn back. Corey's going to go ahead and crack Aether Spellbomb. Take a draw. And now we can get the Emery Chain going. Aether Spellbomb ready to recast. Corey's going to crack his fetch. Go find a mana source. I have a feeling we will see that Spellbomb return. It's a nice little piece of interaction against this Yawgmoth deck. Seeing more Aether Spell Bombs this weekend. Yeah, I feel like over the last couple of weeks they have been on an uptick. It's gone from zero to one in some of the decks. Now we see, you know, two of them running around here or there. It's just another card that feels like the opportunity cost is very low. But there are definitely spots where it's very, it's huge. very high impact. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it be game breaking several times already. Looks like it's time for Court of Calling. I believe we're going to get Dryad Arbor. That's the only option. There it is. <laughs> I was about to say. I <laughs> not a lot of choices here. We're not getting Ornithopter or something. Right? I'm not, I'm not missing any other zeros <laughs> in there, I don't think. <laughs> nice little use of Court of Calling as a ramp spell. And now, four mana available. Time for Yawgmoth. Looks nice. Ready to maybe get a couple cards from that Young Wolf. Cash and Dryad Arbor. The world's your oyster when you have a Yawgmoth in play. Yeah, step one, minus on that young wolf. Going to go ahead and draw a card. Who doesn't attack? Didn't need to. What are we doing here, Brian? Didn't need Come to. on. Unnecessary. Sure, we're going to draw almost our whole deck. Dry it out. We're going to do some more minusing. We're going to minus on Emery one more time. Dealt with effectively. In turn, going to pass back to Corey. Corey, a little bit of a sideways glance there. Now knows what Aaron's up to. Yeah. The jig is up. <laughs> yeah, I think Corey really has realized that this is going to be very awkward moving forward in this mm -hmm. game. Yeah, Aaron's only another undying creature away from basically drawing as much as she wants up to her life total. Usually find a Blood Artist from there. Yeah, the, the Spell Bomb is definitely a small hit, you know, That's true. hiccup in, in, in those plans. But Aaron with a million cards yeah. to work with. Very full grip. I can see a Wall of Roots in hand. Man, do I love Wall of Roots, Greg. Yeah. This is not a card I've gotten to talk about much in our time together, because who plays Wall of Roots? It's been, a, it's been a minute since we've had Wall of Roots in decks, but the, the versatility of this card, where it produces mana on both turns, it can still tap to convoke things, yep. and it's such a big butt on this thing. Yeah, it was a big part of the format very early on. It plays particularly well with Court of Calling, as you mentioned. It doesn't tap for mana, so you can get two points effectively when you're casting Court of Calling. There you see Wall of Roots. A classic from Mirage. I'm sure I opened many Wall of Roots in booster packs back in the day. So here you see Young Wolf 
cast by Aaron, and that's going to merit a response from Corey. You got to go ahead, bounce that Yawg Moth right now. Looks like Aaron was lacking the fourth land to redeploy. No, so last turn she sacrificed the Dryad Arbor as right. one of her mana Thank you, sources. Greg. Thank you. So a land was already played. Well, nice little follow up, though. Karloff's Messenger. We've seen already this deck able to present a reasonable clock while still threatening the combo. Yes, and, and we've mentioned this before with multiple undying things. When you have the Messenger, you just need more life than the opponent. Yep. Yeah, another way to combo out. Yeah, it really feels like Corey's going to be priced into returning that Aether Spellbomb for a while now. Anytime the shields are down, the game is just over. Could certainly find other forms of interaction, but... All right, here's Emery returning Mox Opal. Representing Cryptic Command, possibly. Yeah, that is very telling when he doesn't go to get the Spellbomb back. Yeah, and just passes the turn back. It's either a Cryptic Command or a Savage, Savage Bluff from Corey. Wouldn't put it past him. An incredible magic player is Corey Baumeister. Aaron, meanwhile, content to just attack. Here comes the squad. Six damage. And you gotta love that. Aaron has so many spells in her hand still. She doesn't even have to, like, force the Yawgmoth onto the board. Agreed. She's saying, oh, I'll just keep deploying these other cards. You don't want to deal with those. And if you ever tap your mana, I'm going to kill you. Yep. Aggro combo, just one of my favorite archetypes in all of Magic. And that's Oof. exactly what this deck feels like. Here's another Messenger. Yeah, and this just mandates a response from Corey. Going to go ahead and cast Cryptic Command. Counter draw are the modes. Going to go ahead and crack a bauble. Takes a little peek and draws for the turn. Does Corey. We need a better name than Golgari Yogmoth. Craig, I don't know if you're familiar with the rules of SCG, but there's a very specific the style There's guide. a certain formula, and I think, yeah, the, the uh, who, who would be the gatekeeper of the naming nomenclature that oh, we it's, use? Oh, it's definitely Cedric. Oh, you think it's Cedric? Yeah. So I just need to get Cedric on the horn. If, if you can get him to change this, the name of this deck, I think it will stick. Okay. Because this is... I mean, you got to propose something to me. You can't just bash the name without an alternative. Why? Well, this is descriptive. It tells you what colors the deck is. Oh, easy. I, I'm not coming it after you, buddy. It tells you the card. Jeez. <laughs> you really like this name, apparently. I don't know. I really think it's functional. I don't, I don't hate it. I'll say that. It, it certainly does not roll off the tongue. Uh, that's fair. You know what I do hate? Urza. Eh, maybe that's not even true. But we are going to get to see a classic showdown, Urza versus Yawgmoth. You wanna, why don't you tell us exactly how that occurred in the original Magic story, Craig? No, that would just ruin it for people. Uh, I, I think there are some people that haven't seen the movie yet. Okay, so you don't want to spoil it. Yeah, I will not spoil that for them. Very kind of you. The, see, the Once Upon a Time is a bad card because when you hard cast, it costs... All of two mana. It looked okay there. I'm going to be honest with you. It, but it, it's so expensive, and you only look at the top five cards. Not that many cards. What a stupid card. I, I really like this deck as another potential home for Once Upon a Time. I think Once Upon a Time is underutilized in modern presently, and I understand why. It's not exactly what the format is about, but I think as this format starts to change a little bit, and as we are all pretty far ahead of ourselves right now, maybe we should pump the brakes on that a little bit. A lot of assumptions about what's going to happen with Oko in the future. I think if things do happen, Once Upon a Time is set to shine. Sure, not super popular right now. I think the same thing about uh, Ancient Stirrings right now. Okay. Where it's just great at doing what it does, uh, but with the way the metagame is, it's not the most exciting card at the, the present time. 
Aaron's going to go ahead and grab a blood artist. What if we called this undying stinkers? Undying stinkers. Have to run that up the totem pole. For some reason, I feel like that name is not going to stick, but you never know. There you see blood artist. This is the kill condition for Aaron's deck. Whenever a blood artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life, you gain one life. Once you have Yawgmoth, a couple undying creatures in play, just bounce them around, kill your opponent. Aaron seems like she's clear to go for it here. Some concern about Metallic Rebuke, for sure. Yeah, there's the potential for another Cryptic Command as well. Yeah, very true. Four artifacts available for Urza. So it looks like we're still just on this beatdown plan. Here comes Messenger. Hmm. So it's bigger. Getting pumped by the Noble Hierarch. Yep. So... No effective blocks. Yeah, initially I was like, well, Urza just has to get in front of this thing, right? But the answer is no, and Corey's going to fall to just two. So, so, yeah, you don't want to lose your Urza. There, there's some allure of trading your, your construct with it, but then you're still taking a boatload of damage right. from the Messenger coming back and the double Blood Artist trigger, so you're actually not gaining anything by trading with it. So you might as well take the damage and leave your construct on the battlefield. Yeah, and your entire offensive capacity is just gone as well. Looks like Corey wants to act before the turn heads back to him. I see a gal Galvanic Blast in hand. That's going to head at that Blood Artist. That means Corey falls to just one. Oh, this Messenger is a huge nightmare now. Now there's only one Blood Artist in the deck, so that particular combo kill is gone. As long as that Messenger is around, though, you don't really care all that much. Plenty of ways to get the job done if you get your Sacrifice Outlet out. Well, and there's more Messengers in the deck. That as well. So just any tutor effect would be able to get the job done. All right. Yeah, I mentioned Aaron's deck very adept at putting you into the squeeze, making you feel like you have no good options. See Corey feeling a little bit of that here. Going to go ahead and play Gilded Goose. Oh, that's an important one. Yeah, that's a way to recoup some life. Yep. Pretty big find. Well, this game's going to get sticky, Craig. <laughs> we need more permanence on the battlefield is what you're saying? Don't you worry. Every single one of these cards is capable of putting permanence on the battlefield. So. Okay, I was, I was worried for a second yeah, there. Emery's going to go ahead and bring back a permanent. Maybe Urza wants to spin, see if it can find some permanence. Gilded Goose can produce permanence. Plenty of permanence. Looks like the turn is passing back to Aaron now. She is going to untap. Takes a draw. Didn't quite catch it. Yeah, we know Aaron still has that Yawgmoth rolled up, right? Yep. Absolutely. Strangle Root Geist is the other card. Can't really get the third one. Once this Urza deck starts rolling, it's so good at protecting itself. It just generates so much value on a turn-to-turn -turn basis by creating these faux permanents. Here's Strangle Root Geist. So we're going to start tapping some artifacts. Another Cryptic Command, perhaps? Yep. It's the new PTQ Cryptic Command that we're looking at there? Yeah, the, the foil one. Um, Very nice. 
I, I, Corey's got to have another counterspell in his hand or else he's just basically committed suicide. Here's a Cavalier of Night. <laughs> okay. That's one you don't see very often. No. Lots is, of text on that one. It is not. And this is going to be able to sacrifice that messenger, potentially present lethal. We know there's outs. Certainly can crack a food. There is another cryptic command. Yeah, there, there had to be. Yeah, it makes sense. It's going to go ahead and counter Cavalier. But we do know, Aaron, Yawgmoth still in hand. Yeah, Corey bounced the Mystic Sanctuary back to his hand. So he, he is in a position where he could play the Sanctuary, put his Cryptic Command back on top, yep. cash in the Spell Bomb, draw the Cryptic Command, and, and leave himself that breathing room that way. And in the meantime, Urza's just giving him all the mana to do this. Yeah, there you see. Cryptic Command goes back on top. This is the thing where this deck really went to the next level in my eyes when Mystic Sanctuary gave it this Cryptic Command angle. It's funny because when I first saw that, I was like, this, wh what's this deck trying to do? Everything. You know, I, uh, to me, Everything. It, it was a combo deck, and now it has a four-mana counterspell in it. And it's, like I said at the start of our show, no, th this to me is the best of blue-white control and Jund put together. Right. Where it just controls every aspect of the game and has ways to win once it takes control. Yeah, I mean, look at the game plan that Corey has been able to play right now. Here comes Oko. That card's pretty good. Turns out. We, we just figured it out. Yep. Corey really racking his brain here. It's a perilous situation, for sure. Yeah, he's in a tough spot. Uh, he wants to gain life just to give himself some breathing room in mm -hmm. case something ridiculous happens with the messenger. Uh, he doesn't want to let Aaron just attack with all of the creatures. And he also needs to make sure he has the cryptic command up every turn. Yeah. Emery is going to rebuy another bauble. Looks like both are going to be cracked. Oko is going to do something. Food. Well, the food is great because if you need it, it's there as another mana source. Right. And if you don't need the mana... Add your life total. Yeah, it's the life. Corey is going to cast that bauble, or crack that bauble, rather. Draws two. Aaron takes a draw. It feels like Aaron really needs to get to a spot where Corey is forced to use that cryptic to prevent combat. Well, looked like a court of calling in Aaron's hand. Ooh, that's a nice one. I, I might be wrong, but it... If it was, that one's huge because Agreed. it's instant speed. Agreed. Yeah, one of the really cool things about this deck, it can do its combo at instant speed. That is a huge, huge point in its favor. Used to play a lot of ad nauseum back in the day deck looks laughable by today's standard <laughs> but back then yeah having the access to an instant speed kill was a really big deal i mean you say things like that and i'm like oh that was like 10 years ago right it wasn't that long ago played it at pt valencia and crushed the constructed portion that was kind of its first big showing and that was 2014, so going back five or six years now. Sure. Combat time. Aaron would have loved to see Corey fire that cryptic at that point. Not going to happen. 
line up some blockers. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, there's the block. Going to go ahead and respond to the messenger trigger. Gain some life. Corey's going to settle at two. Messenger comes back with a plus one, plus one counter. Now, I, I don't think Corey can do everything, but part of me doesn't like him tapping the other food for mana. I understand. It just feels like if you end up not using your lands, you still might want to sacrifice that other food to gain some life. I, I think Aaron has found a really nice setup here. It, it is a Court of Calling in hand. Fairly confident. And here's just the hard cast Yawgmoth that's going to demand this cryptic. And I think you just respond to this cryptic with your cord and go for it. Yep. Corey's thinking about modes right now. There you see indicating to the Mystic Sanctuary. Aaron's going to go ahead and sort out the battlefield as is a required step when dealing with Urza. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it looks like it is, in fact, time for Court of Calling. And that's going to fire for seven. I think we minused on that wall of roots. And that's going to be enough to go get another Yawgmoth and win this game if Corey does not have another response. Oh, just gets Messenger. Okay. Maybe that wall of roots already had four counters. Yeah, that, that's enough to do it. Yep. And Aaron finds the win. Whew, that was a tight little game right there. That was fun. Yeah. Interesting stuff on both sides. Ultimately, though, Aaron Barish takes down game one. Really like this deck, Craig. I'm excited for its future, but let's talk about the present. Let's talk about sideboards. We're going to start over on Corey Baumeister's side. There you see three Anger of the Gods. Good Lord. Sure. Yep. Three Blood Moon, two Ashiok, Dream Render, yep. two Mystical Dispute, two Veil of Summer, one Ceremonious Rejection, one Disdainful Stroke, and finally an Experimental Frenzy. Craig, what you doing here? I don't know. Give me a ton of these cards. Yeah, a lot of these seem strong. Anger of the Gods just seems great. Just cleaning up the entire board, and none of the Undying Creatures are going to come back. Uh, Veil of Summer seems like it could just line up really well, and... This is a situation where the opponent's casting enough black cards where I feel like Veil of Summer, there are points where you can just cycle it if, if you feel like you need another card. Uh, I think Disdainful Stroke is strong. There's a lot of cards that Aaron's going to be casting that will cost four or more mana. Yeah. So I, I, I like a lot of these cards. I think there's just an argument for a lot of this stuff. First of all, Aaron is playing a deck which is looking to cast triple black spells actually has a ton of non-basics in the deck. Now, granted, there's some other sources of mana. There's the Birds of Paradise. Yep. But I could see, like, an argument for trying to restrict Aaron on that axis. But also, Ashiok Dream Render, Aaron is in the deck all the time. There's tons of searching yep. to be done. Yep. So, And controlling the graveyard as well can occasionally be relevant, although at that speed, it's really not going to have the effect you were looking for. So I think there's some reasonable options here for Corey. Going to have to kind of rebuild the deck on the fly. I don't think this is a heavily tested matchup for Corey, but Corey plays a ton of magic. He has seen this deck around. He at least has some plan. Sure. Meanwhile, over on Aaron's side, she's looking at two Thought Seas, two Veil of Summer, two Damping Sphere, an Abrupt Decay, an Assassin's Trophy, Thrashing Brontodon, Plague Engineer, Obstinate Bailoth, a Phyrexian Revoker, Reclamation Sade, Yixlid Jailer, and finally a Kitchen Finx. Craig, what do you want to do if you're Aaron? Again, Lots of cards that Lots I could see options. coming in in this matchup. Uh, I, in these controlling matchups, I like Thoughtseize a lot. I think stripping a key card is important, and just having that information to know exactly how you want to play the game is good. Veil of Summer seems really strong against all of these Urza decks. Uh, and then a, a smattering of these other things where uh, Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy, there's a lot of versatility there. Uh, potentially the Phyrexian Revoker is strong enough. So there's just, just tons of options here. A lot of options as we head into game two. We know you have a lot of options when it comes to what magic you want to watch, but nothing's better 
than SCG's YouTube page versus live, Commander versus Flashback, and the best of the SCG tour, all available for you at youtube.com slash Star City Games. Of course, Corey Baumeister, heavily featured on that YouTube page. You can see him dropping bombs over there, playing the versus live series, all that good stuff. Does that mean he swears a lot? No, that's not what that means, Craig. Craig, very familiar with the SCG offerings, I see. Up to speed on the latest. It's all, it's all good, Craig. Don't yeah, worry. I, well, we'll, we'll check out the YouTube page after this round. Every time I hear the kids say dropping bombs, I it's know. like, you know, usually not an appropriate thing. I know. These kids with their language and their words. Well, in the slang, I, I'm just so old, Brian. I can't keep up. I don't know what these things mean. I feel you, Craig. I feel you entirely. It's getting hard. I'll tell you, getting older... I have these mystery hairs now that, like, where do they oh, come from? Craig, this, that's it. I, I am stopping this discussion right here. Nobody wants to hear about your mystery hairs. I can't think. People would rather watch Oko Mirrors for 10 hours than hear about Craig Krempel's mystery hairs. I promise you. I'm just saying, getting old, it's not easy. It's not. This is very true. Players looking at their opening sevens, having a little think. Corey seems puzzled. Going to mulligan. Aaron says, samesies. Going to shuffle those back in. You know who's not old? Aaron Barish. And she has continued to crush the SCG Tour, despite that she fact. She really has. 23 years old. Three open top eights last season. All-time nine open top eights. Of course, an invitational win as well capitalized on her only trip to the top eight there and streams over on twitch.tv slash runeclaw bearish you would already know about this deck had you been checking out her streams continues to grow as a player gets better and better as time goes on Corey's just had enough yeah, Corey left wow he mulliganed into the nether realm yeah that is a, a, a shellacking that Aaron laid on him Love to know what, ha what happened to Corey. I'm assuming he exploded until I get further word from the people down there. Well, so there, the there, only logical conclusion. There was a tornado watch, right? Right. Yeah, it's possible Corey was blown away. Just, just sucked right up into a funnel. Very possible. Hopefully, he gets spun back into the feature match area. You know, when I was their age. Back in your day, Craig, continue. The things that I had to do, watch Wolf. Yeah, we did not have magic cards like this. I mean, are you kidding me? There was a period where Shimeric Idol was the best creature in magic. Wild. Times have changed. I see a whiteboarded thought sees in Aaron's hand. What is happening? How do these cards continue to lose their beautiful black borders? Corey is going to be on the play for this matchup. Fires off a few zero mana artifacts. Why not? They're free. If it's free, it's me, Craig. Aaron going to lead on Overgrown Tomb and that whiteboard of Thoughtseize met with Metallic Rebuke. What is this Thoughtseize from? I, I am assuming it's just altered. I don't think we've made whiteboarded cards in a very long time. What would be your reaction if they brought back whiteboarded cards? Eh, I, it, I don't think it would really bother me. Does that... Like, obviously certain people have an affinity for the uniqueness of it. So if it was right. back for just the base sets or something like that, eh, whatever. I would love them to bring back, like, the faded, gross, like, revised style printing. That would be sick. If you could get new cards in that particular We're, style. Uh, all of the ink is just faded on yes. the entire card. Yes. White borders. I would be in for that 100%. You're making me think of all those cards. Back in, back in my day, when I first started playing Magic, no one used sleeves. Right. And all the grimy little black mm -hmm. dirt oh, specs. cards were gross. That would accumulate. Like you'd see it specifically on the white border of the card. Yep. Yeah. I remember. Decent little start over on Aaron's side. But Corey has a nice trump. It's Oko, Thief of Crowns. Aaron, obviously a very creature-centric deck. 
You know what really hates on creatures? Okay. Yes, but I do like... Ah, abrupt decay. At the ready for Aaron. Very nice. That when Yawgmoth comes down, even if it doesn't win the game, every time we've seen it, Aaron's been able to accumulate a yeah. ton of value out of it. Four or five cards. Yeah, I, all right. I'll just draw these five cards. All right, you, Yawgmoth's off the board, no problem. Unfortunately, Mox Opal not yet active for Corey. It's a shame because he does have Urza in hand. He's a powerful little card, though. It's Emery. Mishra's Bobble at the ready in the bin. There's an Arkham's Astrolabe there. Plenty of options for Corey on the next turn. Should he get to untap with that Emery? But Aaron says, I don't know about that. Yogmoth, does Corey have another rebuke? It's like the answer is no, and Yogmoth's going to come down. And like you said, Craig, it just has to hit the battlefield now, and it's going to get some cards back into Aaron's hand. Yeah. A ton of cards, too. Here's Young Wolf. Minus on that Emery. Take a card. Assume we're going to cash in that Jeremy Knoll plant token. Yeah, get rid of that counter on Young Wolf. Another card. Time to kill that Emery now. And, and another thing that's nice about this is that Aaron can just leverage her life totals to the maximum, right? Yeah. Like the, the Urza decks generally are not pressuring the opponent. And even if they are, it's a 3-3 body on the ground, which Aaron can easily put creatures in front of. Yeah, every time Yawgmoth has come down, it's been super impressive. And it's not a surprise, right? After everything that we've seen out of Modern Horizons. What's one more broken card? Yeah, it's just like, this card has to be really good. We just hadn't, hadn't quite figured it out yet. Yeah. Here's a thought seize from Aaron. Going to check and see what Corey's up to. Anger of the gods in hand, but no red source. That Mox Opal is such a tease. Yeah. Needs the second red. And I think we're going to see Aaron win the game this turn. I'd be very surprised if we didn't. Does she have a second undying creature in hand? Can Galv Blast break it up? That's a possibility, too. Well, if it could, I can't imagine she would have left it in the hand. Yeah, I, I think she just doesn't have the second undying creature now, is my guess. Sure, but she can still draw many cards with Yogg. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Three mana tapped. Reclamation Sage. Yeah, deal with that Opal now. And it looks like Aaron's taking the, the value town approach. Where I don't have to win this game. Yeah. Y your hand is so bad. Even if Corey hits a second red source here, you just cash in everything and you're full on gas again. Yep. Well, Yawgmoth's still on the board. One of your wall roots is still on the board. You have 10 cards in your hand. Yeah, and Aaron just beating down now. Here's a messenger. And that's going to do it. Yeah, Corey has the opportunity to react to this, but bounce that token around. My goodness, do it one more time. Yeah, and that's going to get the handshake. And Aaron Barish takes down Corey Baumeister. Two games to zero, 7-0 oh, with Craig's favorite name deck. In